Okay, so what are you saying people and welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel. So today guys like always another weekly analysis for you on the screen other pairs will be analyzing today but make sure you do stay to the end of the video because I do have a bonus pair in store. But yeah guys, we'll go through my trades of the week first and then progress into the analysis shortly after. So feel free to skip ahead using timestamps below if you want to take a look at a particular pair. But I had one position which I took this week and one position which I was carrying over from last week, both on Aussie CAD and both took me out for a loss. So I was short in this one coming to the week. We discussed this briefly last week as well. It was a little bit of profit, but price failed to come to my first area of interest, which was down at these lows here. Didn't quite make it happen, moved sideways, took me out of the trade and I got back in off a of re-entry. But again, that one took me out pretty quickly after. I think there was, there was news at the time, yeah. Um, I think it was some dollar news or maybe CAD news, I forget. But uh, we had some news and price took me out of the trade pretty swiftly after I got in. So back to back losses there on AUD CAD. Not the best week, but again, this is all part of trading. You're going to have wins, losses. As long as they're managed, it's all part of the game. So into next week, as always, start with EURUSD. EURUSD is quite interesting. We're favoring a bit more downside this week. I wasn't expecting such a big pullback. I was looking to see if we can have some miniature pullbacks because that was a the theme of EURUSD for the past maybe two, three weeks now, have these miniature pullbacks. So I've been looking for your USD to come back into this area down here. Ever since we broke through that key support level here at 1.08300 and also broke through this strong trend line here as well. We lost a lot of bullish confluence for me expecting your USD to reverse. We broke through that. So I've been expecting price to kind of slowly leak back down to the support area. So we had a big shift to the upside kind of the first half of the week, second half, and especially off the back of NFP, price comes straight back down. So I'm looking at this maybe as a slight fake out slash a retest of that area. And now we do have a pretty good chance the market's going to come back and test 1.06800, just underneath 1.07. So next week, well, if we go going to the next week, the, the bias is still the same looking at shorts. I do like this particular area here. Let me just tidy up the chart a little bit. I do like this particular area here where we pause briefly on the lower time frames before melting to the downside. And this was this was off the back of NFP. So if you can come back and retest this area here, I already do like this as a place to go short for some continuation to the downside. You've got this price and low. This could be a nice first target or a target in general. That's up to you guys how you want to manage your trades and where you want to get out. For your profits but in terms of a trading opportunity i really like what i'm seeing here on the hourly and on the 4h time frame we get a retest of this area which is trading around 1.08300 uh, 1 come back retest that um, back down to the lows there 1.076 that could be a nice little first target and then looking at price coming back down into that daily support just underneath 1.07 so the buys for your usd for me is well and truly bearish market's been very very consistent with these lower highs as we can evidently see here lower high lower high and of course all these minor low highs there as well still consistent still seeing some strong bearish momentum back into the market especially after nfp so a good chance the market's going to break through these lows and we've got a pretty good chance when it comes to that next key level which is trading around that 1.07 mark so yeah euro usd the plan next week is look for some pullbacks test this area here at 1.08 uh, 200 and then some shorts back down to the to that next key level on the daily time frame Okay, so over to dollar yen. So dollar yen still bullish on this particular market, still looking for a break to the upside. Uh, last week I was talking about if we can get a break of this resistance and looking for some retest, we'll be expecting some continuations higher. We did see a breakout, however, it did turn quite quickly into a big fake out. Really nice momentum to the upside, but as you can see, the market came straight back down on the following candle there. So this is didn't really give it much of a signal to actually get into any retest anyway, but when the market surges to the upside, especially above a key level and comes straight back down with equally aggressive momentum, not a good sign for a healthy breakout. You wanna see the market break out with a lot of momentum, which we did, then have that kind of a slower corrective retracement and that's when we're looking for our retest and of course we didn't really see much of a signal of the market slowing down there anyway but nonetheless still bullish on dolly yen i did say I, I did say during my streams last week or this week actually that i would only go bearish on dolly yen or at least pause with my bullish bias um on dolly yen if we break through this swing low here at 144 500 because this is what gave us our new highs so as long as price does remain above that level or respects that level i'm still technically bullish if i if i do scale to the higher time frames daily chart still pretty consistent with the higher highs and higher lows still seeing a lot of bullish momentum present in the markets here so i would not be looking to to short this market anytime soon at least until we break through that low there on the full h 
Uh, and again, as you can see, we came back and respected it very, very nice. So I'm expecting Dolly N to continue to the upside back to the swing highs here at uh, 147.300. Longer term, still looking at 145, which is back at the highs here on the left. So still a pretty long way to go. But in terms of the next opportunity I'll be looking at is to see if you can get back above that same resistance I was talking about last week. Look for some retests off the back of that and then some longs. Or even if we do come back and retest this area here as well. Like I said, as long as we respect that, I am still bullish on dollar yen. We're still holding this 145 resistance here. So this was a key daily um, resistance previously. Sent us to the downside pretty aggressively, but now the market is using that as support. So as long as we can hold that, I would still be expecting dollar yen to continue its uptrend. But pretty much bullish on monthly, weekly, daily timeframes. All the major, uh, uh, all the major high timeframes are still bullish. So I know that a lot of, a lot of the confluence, a lot of, uh, a lot of the wind in the cells is pointing up. Therefore, in terms of my trading. I'm basically looking for pullbacks in that direction and taking it further until we get a nice break of structure, which still hasn't happened yet. So dollar yen, next key target is back at the highs there at 147.300. Beyond that, it does get a little bit tricky because we have to look all the way back to some of these highs here for some targets. Again, this is a nice big kind of round target, 150 big psychological level, back to that major swing high. So it's quite easy to, to spot that obvious target, but some of these areas here, a little bit more... Um, discreet i would say in terms of targets but i would keep an eye on the psychological levels definitely coming to 148 148 500 149 these could be some nice extended targets to aim for before we do aim for 150 although if you are feeling a little bit braver you can probably stretch the trade to 150 if you want to again that's up to you but it's a little bit too aggressive for me so probably looking at this high here maybe some targets around the 148 148 500 mark for some tps as well if i do get into any dollar yen trades but uh as the analysis is going forward, looking at some pullbacks back onto where we came from 145 or a nice break and retest of 146, 500. And then let's see if we can get some nice entries to go along next week. Okay, so on to dollar CAD. So dollar CAD and maybe dollar Swiss are the only kind of dollar pairs which I'm a little bit hesitant to get long on because I am quite bullish on dollar itself, the currency, DX, why I'm expecting more upside for dollar. So Euro USD, pound USD, AUSD, ends the USD. I'm expecting them to be heading down. USD CAD, of course, I would naturally be expecting to heading up. However, in terms of the technicals on this particular market and maybe dollar Swiss as well, in terms of the situation where we're trading at, it doesn't really make too much sense for me to get long on dollar cat of where we're coming into. We've got a big level of resistance here, which we did rebound off um, this week. And of course, we do have this higher time frame trend line connecting the major swing highs there, one, two, potentially three as well. So from a technical standpoint, it doesn't make sense for me to get long on dollar cad. And this is kind of why I do like trading multiple uh, markets, because if I am bullish on dollar, expecting strength from, uh, from a currency perspective for dollar, then I don't necessarily have to be looking to trade dollar cad. I can trade pound USD, euro USD, which makes a lot more sense to go short based on the technicals, at least with the technicals that I trade with, um, for me to take advantage of opportunities on those pairs. But dollar cad will be a pair that I kind of be a bit hesitant on or wait to see if we can get a bit more development, aka if we can break through this structure here, then of course the buys will look a lot better. If we can stay above that, we can start ticking off some of these highs to the left. That will be the next target and so on and so forth. And price may, may um, print new highs, but as we are coming into this level, dollar CAD could easily push to the downside. And again, my bias for dollar could be wrong as well. I, it's just what I favor based on a, a few set of reasons. But of course, nothing's 100%. So I could be wrong as well with my dollar strength bias. But uh, for dollar CAD, because of where we're coming into, I'd rather be looking for sales for this one. But again, I need that trend to change. We have had a, a nice push to the downside. We did kind of break through the uh, break through the low there, but not very aggressively. So I want to see price start coming back down again, maybe form a big double top, break through the lows, and then I'll consider looking to short and take some sales in the opposite direction. So this is kind of what I'm looking at for dollar CAD going forward, even though it kind of goes against my bias for dollar. Um, it, it, this makes sense from a technical reason because again i'm a trader uh first analysis second so if my analysis tells me okay price may go up that's cool but if there is not a good trading opportunity for it then there's nothing for me to do if there's a good sell opportunity to trade it 
it lines up with the analysis, then I'll take that trade every single day of the week. And this is kind of what I'm looking for for dollar CAD. Whether it happens or not is yet to be seen. But if you can get a nice break and we test the 1.35, I'll consider looking for some shorts there because at that point, we've rejected the highs fully. We've broke through some structure as well. There's a good chance the market's going to come back and we test the solid high there on the left at 1.338. So that's kind of what I'm looking at next week for dollar CAD. But let's see if we can get that break of structure first. Okay, so on to Euro Pound. So Euro Pound for me is still a choppy market, still kind of trading within a range here. We've got some highs at around uh, 0.86466. The market's kind of spiked above it a few times. We've got some lows around here as well, which the market has respected a couple times as well. So overall, the direction of Euro Pound for me is more sideways than anything. Higher time frames, there is a slight downtrend, so I do favor the sales altogether based on purely the higher time frame direction, but on the 4H time frame, which is the time frame I look at the most, it's kind of sideways. So I'll definitely be looking at other markets uh, going into next week. But if you are looking to trade Euro Pound, I would favor the sales. There are some key lower highs that are starting to develop now, which potentially could get the market heading south again on the lower time frames and, and looking to follow that higher time frame uh, direction. Which again, if we can start taking out some of these lows here, then I'll be interested because we're kind of out that kind of range. And now I can see maybe a bit more momentum in the market like we had previously over here. But for me, it's still a little bit sideways, so I'll be staying put on Euro Pound. But uh, I'll be looking at some sales around these areas here. Uh, last week, I was talking about these uh, highs there coming potentially into this level here, 0.86, 300, uh, slightly above it. So if you were to see some deeper corrections into some of these areas, that would be a nice place to, to be looking for some um, opportunities. Because at that point, you've got a much safer stop loss than you are trading around here, back down to the lows or near enough the lows of the consolidation, which is just never a safe place to have a stop loss in general, especially if you're not, um, if you're not buying, if you're selling into the lows of consolidation, just uh, theoretically doesn't make, make too much sense. But if you can see a bigger push higher, especially to the higher, higher, high of the range, at least you can have a safe stop loss. And of course your risk reward will be a lot better as well. So if you are looking at trading Euro Pound, I keep an eye on 0 0.86, 0 0.86, 200. I would favor some lower highs developing around here. Maybe if you can retest that, double top it and sell off. Something similar to what we had over here. And potentially if you go a little bit higher, there's also this area value as well, which we may tap into the trend line, that resistance and of course sell off from there as well. So I'm still bearish on Euro Pound because of the higher time frames, but it's, a, it's, it's more than a sideways market than anything on the 4H that I'll be staying put. And targets pre, pretty self-explanatory back down to the lows there. We could go further if we do see a breakout, but I'll be um, yeah, better be safe than sorry. So 0.85 looks like a healthy target to have as well. So that is my analysis going forward with Euro Pound. High time frames still look bearish, so I do favor the sells but it's more consolidation on the 4H, so I'll be staying put. But if you do see some, some moves high into some key areas, such as 0.86 and 0.863, start looking for some entries if you're keen to trade the pair. And you've got some really nice target down there at 0.85. So let's see what happens next week with Euro Pound. Okay, so on to AUDUSD for next week. The bias has not changed. Still looking at sales overall. Still looking at push back down to 0.8. Uh, 0.8, don't know where I got the 8 from, 0.62. So still looking at a lot more downside for AUSD back down to these lows. I'm still looking to see whether we have that deeper correction, then sell off or we just sell off straight away. Again, my analysis on the DXY still looks pretty bullish for, the, uh, for DXY going into next week. So I'm expecting more um, more strength in the dollar pretty soonish. So I would I would favor AUSD selling off rather than having a deeper retracement either. Although, uh, definitely some good opportunities to be had for AUSD. You can see on the daily time frame, we're really respecting this price swing low. Of course, it's a lovely support, big move to the upside. Now term resistance, some nice wicks there um, above it as well. So it does look like AUSD is really rejecting this level particularly well. And we could be looking at our next leg to the downside, whether we just see a straight drop to the lows there, that's a different um, question. But uh, I am expecting more downside for AU next week. So the market is holding on to 0.65. You can see another retest of that area because we had a very aggressive push to the upside and then sell off off the back of NFP. So unless you're entered off the back of that, you're probably looking for some retests on the lower time frames for some selling opportunities next week. Now, again, in terms of the, the way the market's moving, it's more sideways than a bit of a trend. If you do zoom out, it has been a nice trend, but uh, recently it's been a bit more sideways. So. Uh, when you are looking to shop at these highs, I would be pretty um, 
pretty pretty aggressive with the targets making sure you're taking profit down at these lows because for all we know we could see that range continue and the market continue to move sideways and maybe eventually break to the upside as well uh, for a deeper retracement in the higher time frames but of course if you do see the breakout of this low here around 0.64 just underneath 0.64 then probably we can see some more momentum come back into play and probably some nice selling opportunities afterwards, some nice break and retest and looking to kind of continue that momentum all the way down to 0.62, which is our kind of a swing target on the weekly and daily time frame. So if we do clear 0.64, this level here, I'll be very interested in AU, but for now, it's more of a ranging market until otherwise, until we get the breakout. So naturally looking to short high because we do favor that sell off in the higher time frame. So naturally you're gonna favor sales in the range rather than looking to buy. But um, if you do get the break of 0.64, now we're talking, now we can probably see some healthy momentum. But if you are looking at trading AU next week, look for some pullbacks back into that area of value. We're holding it very nicely on the daily time frame. So I would expect that to continue. And of course, you've got a nice healthy target where the market's wicked into a few times already. Just underneath 0.64 at 0.63800. So that's a nice little drop to the downside. But then if you can break through the consolidation there, then I'll be more keen to look for some sells, some break and retest. Again, hypothetically, we're not too sure where. Um, of course, on the retest of that level, that would be nice, but we may push on a little bit. So I could be looking at a low that the market creates somewhere as well. So that will only, we'll only find that out when we actually do see the breakout. So that is the plan for ADUSD next week. Looking to short high around 0.65 and next targets back down to the low 0.638. And after that, still expecting 0.62 in the longer term. Okay, so on to ends of the CAD. So ends of the CAD still bearish bias on this one. It has been a little bit slow, similar to ADUSD. Um, still very bearish on both of those uh, markets, but we have been moving sideways for a while, as we can see here. Markets giving us some equal highs, some equal lows, and quite choppy price action altogether. But it hasn't changed the bias of the market. The market's still creating lower lows and lower highs on the 4H, on the higher time frames, as we can evidently see. We're still looking for longer. Uh, push the downside possibly to the to these lows eventually i've been talking about this low here as well uh quite a lot just around 0.79300 uh, as well so i still do um, believe that nd cad is heading to those lows at least until we break through until we break through any major structure aka this high over here if you start breaking through this high at 0.817 then I'll scrap that bearish bias, at least for then, uh, and probably expect more upside because we have this lovely impulse move to the downside. This for me is still very corrective behavior. I'm expecting the market to print another lower high and continuous path to the downside, back down to the lows. And eventually we got the swing targets down there as well. So going to next week, we are still respecting this price support level here at 0.81, the market's still in that area. So again, if you can see another stab into that area, this is where you wanna be looking for your shorts. Stop loss, stop loss pretty safe above the high there as well. If you do start taking out the highs there, we most likely will take out that high as well. So you would want to be out the market if the market does um, take your stop loss there. Of course, it could potentially be a, um, a fake out, potentially a big wick as well. That's obviously a possibility, but it's most likely a safe stop loss above the highs there. If you're looking for the sell, again, a nice target back down to the price swing low there as well. And then potentially you've got the daily target there too. So it's up to you how far you want to take that trade. Of course, you've got the swing targets down there, although I would recommend probably not looking for that in one go. Uh, and if you are taking profit along the way, it would be very, very vital for that. But uh, ends of the CAD going forward, still bear still seeing some nice momentum it has been a little bit stagnant for a while but uh i'm expecting us to see another breakout to the downside something similar to this nice healthy breakout to the downside see the next bearish leg again as long as we stay below this high here at 0.817 so keep an eye on the retest 0.80968 some nice targets back down the low at 0.79 and uh, 0.79300 after that Okay, so onto pound entity. So pound entity is still bullish bias, still treating this price action here as a correction of this big bullish move. So I'm expecting the price to eventually find support and push the upside. I have pointed out this big level here down at 2.09 ish as a nice level to buy from. I wasn't too sure price is going to get there. Still am not quite sold on it yet. But uh, as we're moving to the downside, it looks more and more likely. So I potentially could still see another big push to the downside and some buys come in. 
and uh, down at this level here this makes up a very nice level for a trade i was actually looking for the retest of this level back over here didn't quite see the retest so potentially you might be seeing it now and in terms of risk reward looks very, very healthy as well but uh, the longer term buys for pound is still bullish Still looking for this wick here to be taken out for pound NZD. And again, if you do expand and look at the higher time frames, you know, these two bearish candles kind of fit the picture. You know, after such a big move, you do expect to see some retracement, potentially even retesting some wicks down here. A third bearish candle wouldn't necessarily bro uh, blow things out of proportion. Still looking like a healthy retracement looking at the higher time frame. So in my books, pound NZD is still retracing for some longs. And uh, my bias is still bullish. I'm still waiting for a good buy opportunity. And at the moment, this is the best area I can see. Unless maybe we see a big push to the upside, breaking above this resistance, then I would consider some buys on top of that level there as well. Got some nice healthy targets just above us, back at the high there too. So some buys above 2.13700 look pretty good too. But uh, we may come to the downside first as well. So it's up to it's up to pound NZD how. Uh, how we move next week and of course we can just react to that and make decisions based on that but in terms of key areas good areas to look to buy from 2.09 still looks pretty good and so does that high there if we can break above it uh, firstly but uh, in terms of the buys still looking at buys and that's uh, still the bullish buys going into next week let's see if you can get a retest of 2.09 or a breaking retest of 2.13 to ride this back to highs Okay, so CAD Yen up next. So still basically consolidation for CAD Yen, but the bias hasn't changed. Still failing to break through the same resistance I've been calling for the past two weeks. I said if you can break through this resistance, then we can look for some longs. Saying that for the past two weeks, and we just haven't seen that the market keeps coming to that same area and keeps respecting it. And again, I'm not really a type of guy who just sells and buys because the market's rejecting a certain area. I'm looking for trends, I'm looking for momentum, and I'm looking to follow that momentum. Higher time frames for me for Kajian are still pretty bullish, still seeing overly momentum to the upside. So I still want to follow you know this big surge to the upside for the price to get back to the highs there and potentially even break through them, maybe. So uh, that's still the plan uh, for CAD-GN, looking to ride that momentum and continue that to the upside. And if we can break through that resistance, there's a good chance that the momentum will carry us back to highs and potentially further as well into that 110 area. So uh, CAD-GN, the, the bias uh, is still very bullish. I'm only looking for buying opportunities as long as we can respect lows. I mean, the market hasn't really broken through any key lows yet. We've still been printing some higher lows here. So there is is a slight stepping stone to the, to the upside. The market is slightly pushing higher but we definitely have not broken through that resistance and uh if we don't break through that won't do anything because more 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 um, more or less right now the market is kind of just moving sideways so um i'm not too particularly keen to trade it but if we do break through this with momentum and things look good on the retest then i'll be keen to trade it for cad gen because again with this big uh, consolidation normally means a big breakout as well so if i can catch a nice retest i do think we can find some really nice healthy trades here to ride for uh right for um some bullish momentum next week but we do need to get that breakout next week uh not, not next week we just need to get the breakout so um yeah looking for the retest of 108 cad gen in my books is still pretty bullish especially in the higher time high time frames 4h is more sideways than anything we are still respecting support so we can still see the buyers are still fighting hard but i do want to see evidence that we are printing some higher highs again and there's a bit more of a trend to follow and then i'll look for some retest and then some longs back to the high there more or less around 109 400 for next week Okay, so pound USD up next, so another dollar pair. So like I've said with, with dollar, I'm pretty bullish on dollar going into next week. And I can see more upside for dollar um, itself. And uh, I will be expecting downside for these dollar pairs. So pound USD, Euro USD, AUSD, NZUSD, I'm expecting downside. Um, dollar yen, I'm expecting upside. The only ones I'm a little bit in with is USD CAD and USDC CHEF. Those I'm kind of putting to one side for, but for pound usd which is the pair we're analyzing right now sales still look pretty good you can still see the market is quite corrective but it's still printing these lower highs still pushing to the downside as well now it looks like we're breaking back underneath some key support as well uh, at 1.26200 more or less around that area there as well so for pound usd i'm expecting price to continue this bearish momentum to the downside nfp lovely move to the downside hopefully we can see bit more momentum of pound usd because we've been very very choppy for a while did see a little bit of momentum there but then we crept back inside the consolidation so that's been a little bit of a weird one but now it looks like price could be clearing out um 
clearing out that level completely and if you can get a nice healthy break and retest that looks like a decent sell opportunity next week and in terms of targets i'm looking at this big old level of resistance looking at potentially the market coming back down there maybe using it as support uh, or breaking through we'll find out when we get there but in terms of pound usd still printing lower lows still printing lower highs as well so now we're looking for the retest to get some nice trading opportunities some stop losses above the zone pretty safe place for it and then again some continuations back down to 1.24 500 we'll call it so um yeah pound usd still pretty bearish really nice momentum let's see if we can get some retests it's a very similar opportunity to euro usd as well i think i do prefer euro a little bit more than pound but nonetheless both good opportunities so keep an eye on both of them and uh, yeah first target could obviously be back down to the prior low similar situation to euro usd as well back at one uh, 1.255 and then we are looking at 1.245 as the next key target. So yeah, more downside for pound USD. Let's see if we can get a nice retest off the back of 1.261 next week. Okay, so on to pound CAD. So towards the end of the week, I was starting to look for some buys for pound CAD. We started to print some higher highs and higher lows. We got back above some key structure, which I was actually buying from a couple of weeks ago. That one ended up in the loss, but then we got back above that area. Started seeing some nice higher highs and higher lows as well. So I'm looking to, to follow that momentum um, on Thursday there, but I didn't get any entries. The market kind of broke from our area of interest pretty quickly. I was looking for the retest of this high here. Didn't see the entry signals looking for the market broke underneath and broke back above and that was breaking back below again so being quite messy for pound cab but what i can see now is that the market is starting to print some successive lower highs we haven't really broken any key structure in terms of you know higher lows here we have been printing high lows for a while on pound cad if you zoom out in the higher time frames you can see that uh, so we haven't really broken through any key lows but we definitely are showing a lot of signs of exhaustion and that this bullish trend may be starting to come to an end and we could be looking at pound cad heading to the downside in the near future and i say that because of course we're getting these lower highs in fact we're not really seeing much momentum anymore as well very sluggish bullish momentum not really seeing very strong momentum especially seeing quite a lot of selling pressure coming back down as well as you can see as you can see as you can see and as you can see so if we can start breaking through some key support then that will tell me that okay the buyers are well well and truly failing to hold hold price above support and progress in these higher lows and i'll be expecting a lot more downside possibly back down to this key support level here so if i can see a nice breakout to the downside past this point i'll be looking at some lower highs and a continuation lower keeping up with this pattern here high low high low high low high another low high but this time it's actually broken through some structure so now actually looking to short looks uh, of a good quality position i still think sales are a little bit too early right now because we're still respecting support but if we can break through that which is 1.707 that'll tell me that okay buyers are failing we've seen successive lower highs we're starting to build a picture for the bearish um for the bearish market for for a bearish trend to develop and we could be looking at coming back to some key support around 1.69 as well now higher time frames for me are still quite bullish i would say we have to break through this low here for me to be well and truly bearish on the higher time frames we still could double bottom and, and possibly rally to the upside from that so that is still opportunity there but more on the kind of a short medium term uh, side of things sales do look good if we do break through 1.707 so that's what i'll be waiting for next week i'm not interested in buying pound cad anymore even if we do re rebound off that support level i'm not really interested in any buys but if you do break through the support level i would be interested in the sell so keep an eye on 1.0 uh, 1.707 for some uh, short entries and targets around 1.69 look pretty high quality next week Okay, so next up we've got pound yen. So pound yen still pretty bullish on still expecting more upside. Um, again, high time frame still consistent with the higher highs and higher lows. We had this big, big push to the downside, and since then the market has been rallying to the upside quite well. We saw new higher highs. So I'm still looking at this move here as we trace them for the market to continue higher as well. So for me, nothing significant has really happened with um, with pound yen. We have formed a lower high here, so it is the first time the market is starting to tire. But again, we haven't really broken through um, any key lows yet. And we haven't really seen successive lower highs. If you start printing a third and the fourth, then yeah, I'll probably start to lean more to the sell side of things with pound gem. But this lower high doesn't really um, really change much for me. 
uh, and I'm still looking at buys from this level here at 183. This is the level I was talking about last week. You saw a nice double bottom just before the week ended and we head to the upside without coming to test that area. But I do think we have a good probability of coming back to test that same level just above 183. And if we can hold it, I'll be expecting the market to push the upside again back to the highs at 186 and eventually 186.500. So my bias for pound yen is still long bias, coming to a very nice level of support. I'm still expecting to see those higher lows remain intact for pound yen. If we do start breaking through and start printing some lower highs, then of course I look to reanalyze things and maybe change my bias. But at this moment in time, I'm still seeing higher highs and higher lows. So I'm still looking to take pound yen higher, back to 186 and potentially 185, uh, 186.500 as well. Maybe some new highs too. But uh, yeah, pound yen still bullish, still seeing successive higher lows. We had this really nice impulsive bullish leg to the upside. I'm looking at retracement. We're coming back to some nice areas in the FIB as well. So we've got a really good area of support. Just need to wait for some good entries. I'm not saying just buy because we're there. Wait for market to actually show good evidence that we are rejecting these areas. And then we can start looking to take this higher. And we've got some good targets to aim for with some really healthy risk reward, depending on your entry. Back to the highs at 186 and potentially 186.500 for next week. Okay, so on to gold. So gold still looking for a lower high to develop at these prices here. This is the level I was looking for price to hold uh, coming into this week. We kind of broke above it slightly, but we are showing a lot of wicks. The market's not really pulling away. So we are kind of holding this 1930, 1940 area. Again, it's not perfect, but the key thing I'm looking for is that break of structure, some lower highs to develop, and then I'll start looking to short. So just because the market is firing some wicks and looks like it's just about holding to this area, I'm not just looking to jump into some sales we are coming to some nice areas of confluence on the daily time frame so i am looking for something like this as the next move for gold back down to these lows so that is definitely the plan however in terms of actually getting some entries it's still a little bit too early for me especially because the market is actually kind of trading above the level as well so i want to see the market start breaking back below this 1930 area and then start printing some lower highs and then i'll look to jump into some shorts because at the moment in time, it looks like we may be getting a bit of a double top here, respecting the highs a couple of times coming into that 0.618 area. But uh, we certainly can still find support here and still push the upside. We have been quite bullish, some really nice healthy corrections, some nice impulse as well. So this could be another correction for the market to keep pushing. So I'm waiting for a little bit more evidence that we are breaking to the downside. So I want to see price snapping through 9, uh, 1930, start printing some lower highs and then a retest of some structure. Then I'll look to get into some trades and again, look to trade it back to the lows. Because again, it's a long way to go. So I want to make sure I'm taking the best trade I can find, not just because I think the market goes lower. I'm making sure that I'm actually taking a good trading opportunity, not just because my analysis says, okay, gold has a good opportunity to, um, to decline over the next couple of weeks. So gold, I'm looking at sales, bearish bias, looking at low high developing around these areas. Great confluence, but I wouldn't say it's ready to be shorted yet. Um, I want to see some lower highs develop and then when I see what I'm looking for then I'll take some shorts So if you want to see what that is, you know, stay tuned during the streams um, During next week because as gold prints some more candles and more price action I'll tell you what I'm looking to do with my decision making but it's too early to be looking to short I want to see a bit more evidence if you get back on the 1930 see what I'm looking for then yeah We'll start looking for some entries and targets back down to 1886 roughly Okay, so Bitcoin up next. So some activity this week with Bitcoin was quite sluggish the week before, but we did see a big push to the upside and a big dump back down. We are still looking for Bitcoin to take out these lows here. And price actually did come into that area of interest, which I was talking about last week, which was this small doji, doji candle. It doesn't really look like much on the 4H time frame, but if you do go to lower time frames, it is a brief area of support where the market was moving sideways, maybe like the 15, five minute a brief area where we were acting as support moving sideways and of course saw the next big burst to the downside so the market has come back to retest that same area around 27 750 and from that level here a really nice big sell-off to the downside so again for me for bitcoin i'm expecting these lows to be taken out i have pointed out some of these lows here as some key targets we could be looking to come to in the near future but first things first we need to break through that low uh, of course so going into next week for bitcoin in terms of selling areas i do like this high here and i also do like this brief area of support similar to kind of what we did over there but 
with a bit more development there. So with Bitcoin looking at some upside, some retracement, the market's going to take out these lows. We may only test this level over here, which is 26,700, or you might spike a little bit deeper into this area here. Both levels that haven't been kind of retested yet as resistance and both good levels to look to short from as well. So in terms of the buys for Bitcoin, it definitely is bearish. And definitely I'm looking for Bitcoin to head a lot lower, take out this 25K and start coming to some areas around 20, 21K, 20K potentially as well. So some big numbers could be coming up soon for Bitcoin, but uh, I'm not really seeing much evidence that Bitcoin wants to go higher just yet. Of course, I could be wrong. This is all analysis, this is all my opinion. But um, in terms of probability, there's a high chance that Bitcoin will probably move lower according to my analysis at least, um, then move higher. So I'm looking at some more downside, wait for price to come into these areas, wait for some good entry signals. The market is actually respecting these areas, not just test them and it's just short straight away. And then we can look for some trades and yeah, back down to 24,778, which are these lows. Then we can target those in the near future. But that is the plan next week for Bitcoin. And last but not least, we've got our bonus pair, which for this week is Euro NZD. Now, this is a very similar opportunity to Pound NZD. Pound NZD's got a little bit further to go in terms of where I want to buy it. Euro NZD is, is fairly close, so I do think we can get a nice opportunity pretty soon with Euro NZD. But in terms of the opportunity, they're very similar. Of course, Euro NZD and Pound, and Pound NZD are very similar pairs. You can see we had a very healthy uptrend for quite a while now for Pound NZD. Consistent, consistent higher highs and higher lows without failure pretty much the markets keep moving to the upside so again with these conditions i'm only looking for longs looking for the market to push up again i'm not expecting the trend to continue forever but when i do see it break when i start seeing some evidence that we are breaking structure and starting to um starting to fail to go higher that's when i put a pause to my bias but at this point i cannot see any sign that the market wants to change trend just yet so i'm still looking at long still looking to take this one higher or at least just back to the highs here or even the highs here as well uh, both reasonable targets to have for some longs. I'm personally looking at a retest of this level here at 1.80300. We're seeing some really nice confluence line up with this particular area. We've also got a nice Fibonacci level, the 50%, I do believe, coming to that area. Uh, yeah, 50% more or less. You've got the 0.618 just below, so we could spike into that as well. But if you can see some nice healthy rejection around this area here, 1.80300, we'll be looking for some longs. Do take your NZD back to highs. Again, might not target the highs outright. Again, if I can get one to three into here, I'll be more than happy to just take my profit coming to that high. Um, depends how price is moving. I may look to extend the target a little bit further to 1.84. That'll be a decision I make when I actually do take the trade. But for now, these are good targets to aim for. And again, if the trend does continue, we're likely to come back to highs there anyway as well, which is around 1.845. So yeah, pound NZD for me. I mean, your NZD for me, still consistent with the higher highs and higher lows, looking for this trend to continue. We're we'll coming to a nice area of confluence. Keep an eye on that area. Wait for some entries. And yeah, looking to take price higher back to 1.83500 and then 1.84500 respectively. So yeah, that brings us to an end of this weekly analysis, guys. I hope you have found it useful and informative. If you have, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe um, on the channel. It really does help out uh, the content, help promotes the channel. I really do appreciate that. If you want to do see my updates, my trades, my, my videos I create during the week, please be sure to check out my Telegram link in the description. I share all my stuff there. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you are in the Telegram for that. But guys, please be sure to have a fantastic weekend rest with coming into a new month. So again, game faces on getting ready for the new month. Um, yeah, and make sure you like the video and subscribe if you haven't done already and hit the bell so you don't miss out on any streams or uploads in the future. But otherwise, have a great weekend and I'll catch you all next week.